By the title of this video, you probably understand that there's something not quite right with import range if you're just trying to share exclusive parts of a core Google Sheet. So for example, I've imported this task list and I'm hoping that my daily period specific range notes in Sheet 5 are not going to be displayed. So I've gone over here, I've used the import range function to import the task list as you can see here. And I'm thinking, great, no one else can access any other part of that core sheet here. Unfortunately, that's not 100% true. Now, if you have a very clever editor, they can try and figure out some other Google Sheet tabs and access different parts of your core Google Sheet that you might not want to share. Let me show you how. So I'm going to head over to this account here, Mrs. Yagi-san Adade's account, as you can see in the purple. And what she's going to do is her as an editor, she can go over here and have a look at this cell. Even if you've protected this range here, uh, so it can't be edited, she can still click on this cell and she can still click and select all of this. So I'm gonna hit Control A to select all, hit Control C to copy. And then I'm going over to cell I1. And I'm going to go into the formula bar here, hit Control V. And let's make a change here. So she's thinking, okay, I reckon Yagi's pretty lazy and he hasn't updated the tabs. So she goes through, she might select sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, and she finally comes across this sheet, sheet five, which is the default sheets as you add them in. And she goes, okay, well, I wanna see all of the data. So I'm gonna go from A1 all the way, probably across the G's enough, uh, just so we can see what's in it because she's a very curious, clever editor. We hit enter and let's have a look at it, the results. And as you can see, we've got, oh no, you found me, a secret sheet tab. If we alt tab back into my account and go back to the core imported sheet, you can see in sheet five, that's exactly what's in there. Okay, so how do we avoid this? There's probably three to four stages of avoiding a very clever editor from accessing other parts of your Google Sheet. The first stage is quite simple and each stage is a level of complexity more difficult, but also a level of security greater. So the first stage is simply updating your sheet tab names. So instead of sheet five, we could change this to something more complicated. So maybe a alphanumeric random code, or even just something more specific to like I have here, like daily, task list, periods, specific range, notes, etc. It makes it harder for Mrs. Yagi-san Adade to guess the sheet name. So for example, she just put in something random, like she was searching. So if she looked for sheet one, and hit enter, she's not going to find anything. She'll get a reference error because she can't, she doesn't know what's in the sheet. So by simply changing the sheet tab name, it does give you an extra level of security, but it's not impossible for someone to find what's in your sheet. So let's have a look at another approach. So I'm gonna delete this. Okay, so the next level of approach is that we're going to hide the formula inside our sheet. Let's head over to our import range sheet example. And this is our imported range, so you can see up here. And what we're going to do first is create a new sheet tab. So I'm going to hit add sheet and double click on the sheet two. And let's just call that input data and hit enter. And now I'm going to use a, a Google Sheets array to draw all the data from this data sheet into here. So first I'm going to add the curly braces and then I'm going to select, well, I can't really select up this A1, so that's okay. We'll select here. And we'll just change this to A1 over to G, just like we've got. And as you can see in the data sheet tab, it's all been selected all the way down and past the point. Cool, so let's close the curly braces now and hit enter. And now you can see in our input data sheet that this has all been copied just like it is in the data sheet. Great, so all the user can see now is this array formula. So let's go over to this data sheet here. Let's hide it, but before we hide it, let's protect it. So let's use this drop down arrow and go to protect sheet. And now I'm going to set the permissions. And this time around, I don't want Mrs. Yagi to be able to access this. So I can go to only you and select done. Now I'm the only one who has access to this data sheet tab. The next step now is to hide it. So I'm gonna use the drop down menu and then I'm going to go to hide sheet. A awesome side effect of protect sheets and ranges is that when you protect a sheet and you hide it, it's not accessible by another editor. So let's flip back into Mrs. Yagi-san Adade's page. And now she has access to this 
data sheet, but she doesn't know that there is another sheet hidden. Now, she is a clever editor. She could do some investigation and see if there's any hidden sheets. Ah, she can see one hidden there. She's right, right, I'll click that. Let's see what happens. Aha, there was a problem. You're trying to edit a protected seller object. Please contact the spreadsheet owner to remove protection if you need to edit. Okay, she has been foiled at this stage, but she's still pretty smart. She knows a workaround. So this takes it to the next level. If your editors are even cleverer than this, they might know this formula. So if I type in equals here, and she knows by looking at this that there is a data sheet tab. So she can type in here formula text, open up the brackets, and she might type in data, exclamation mark A. Now we know she's probably going to guess it's in A1, and we can close the brackets and let's see what happens. Oh no. Now we can see that she can see the formula here. So if she uses this, she can take this formula now. So she can go control C and then go down to I3. Let's go into the formula, hit control V to paste. And she's going to be sneaky and change this to A1 again and type sheet five. And hit enter. And again, she has access to your sheet. While this is still pretty helpful for most people who aren't going to be able to guess that you have an import range in the background, for the most clever of your editors, this is going to be a piece of cake for them. So what to do? Let's take this to a more complicated step. Okay, so I'm going to delete this and let's head back over to my account. So what we need to do is to create an intermediary sheet and use import range on that intermediary sheet. And then from that intermediary sheet, we're going to import into a sheet we share with our editor. So first things first is we only want to share our task list, but you can share different types of tabs on your intermediary sheet as well. So we need to create a new Google sheet. So let's just do this quickly, file new spreadsheet. And we'll call this intermediary. Cool. And let's import range from this master Google sheet. So we'll go equals quickly import range. We'll grab our URL in curly brackets. I'll we'll select this very quickly. Control C copy and then Control V paste. Double quotation marks, comma. Let's select the range. So it's going to be that task list from A2 across to G. So go back to intermediary. Uh, let's double quotation marks task. Oops. Make sure you have the right capitalization task list it's case sensitive exclamation mark and we'll go a2 to uh, g to keep it open and then we'll close our brackets and hit enter okay it's going to come up with a reference error and we're going to allow access cool bananas so now we've got our intermediary we've got our task list here we could change this to task list if we want enter Great. So right now I don't have anyone shared on this Google Sheet and I don't want anyone shared on this Google Sheet. It is private only to me. The next thing we need to do is to create our shared Google Sheet that we are going to allow our editors to edit on. So now we will go and create a new Google Sheet and we'll say new spreadsheet. And I'm going to select here and we'll just call this input range. Uh, we'll say for clever editors okay cool so now instead of importing from this main core google sheet we're going to import from this intermediary one all right so we'll go our formula again equals import range and we will select this intermediary sheet and hit control c to copy and in double quotation marks control v to paste hit comma open it up uh, it was called our task list so we're going to select that remember now it's up to a1 to g so we'll go task list exclamation mark a1 to g we could do a to g close the double quotation marks close the braces hit enter and then select allow access and now this has been pushed over so from here if we make an update here the intermediary sheet will update and then this import range for clever editors will update one step after the other. Okay, so next thing we need to share this sheet with Mrs. Yagi San Adele. And hit send. We don't need to notify her. 
share cool bananas and let's just copy control C this over and then go to Mrs. Yagi's account and open up a new tab hit control V to enter and she has access to this as an editor so now she can see this import range that's all hunky dory so if she went okay let's be tricky here and copy we'll go into our formula editor and hit control V and if she tries to find something else so for example sheet one for example it's going to come up with a reference error because there is no sheet one head back there is no sheet one in our intermediary she can only access anything now that's in this intermediary sheet all right cool so we've solved the problem there is a downside though the more you use import range the bigger import range files that you have the slower it's going to get right up to the point where it's going to start causing errors for your google sheet so if you've got something simple like a, a list of names for your staff or uh, something only say a thousand a uh, thousand rows deep and only a few columns have got cross this is going to be an effective tool to hide your sheet but if you've got something more complicated or using multiple import ranges all in one sheet then this is not the best approach. And put it off using Google App Script, which is connected to Google Sheets, to code a automation. This tutorial isn't going to cover that, but there is a tutorial that you can find in the description below, a video example and a written tutorial on how to copy and paste data from one Google Sheet to another using Google App Scripts. If you liked the tutorial, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. It really helps boost this channel. See you in the next tutorial.